Welcome to another video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the oil anxiety and basically, does it bear merit to have an oil temperature gauge in your 996-911? And today we're recording from the lovely 996.2, as you'll see in the pictures above. And so this is, from my perspective, the most pragmatic oil temperature solution for the 996 for the ones who want to simply know what is my oil temperature in the sense of when can I push the car and when am I pushing the car too much and I need to slow down. And by simply turning the key, I get me my oil temperature and it costs me a whopping $10 or 10 euros depending on where you're purchasing and so on. This video will be divided into a couple of sections. One is the background. The second one is sort of explaining the differences between temperature versus pressure, options that you have for measuring oil temperature, um, a little bit of a disclaimer and beware section, and then lastly, we will have the solutions. You will find the timestamps in the video description. Okay, so today is going to be maybe a little bit what I would consider a long form or lecture type video on the oil temperature in the 996. So as most of you will know, in the 996 you have the volt gauge, speed, RPM, water temp, gas, and oil pressure. The voltmeter over here in the 997 gets replaced with the oil temp gauge. So when I traded in my 997.1 um, 2SX51 pack for the 996s that I currently own, I thought not that much, honestly speaking, about the volt versus oil temp gauge. Now, I do need to preface this by saving that the voltage gauge has saved me from having to call someone to pick me up because recently my alternator failed. And so I had to do that replacement. But the point is that you can indicate and see on the voltmeter that something is potentially wrong with the alternator, basically whether it's charging continuously the battery. However, in principle, the oil pressure in itself is an incredibly important metric. Why, you may ask? Well, for two reasons. On the one hand side, it gives you an indication of whether your oil has reached operating temperature. So on the 996, some of you may know, your operating oil temperature needs to oscillate between one or two bars. So that's the one and two indicator on the oil, oil pressure gauge. So that's a first indication, basically, starting from cold that the oil has reached operating temperature, giving you, the driver, the indication that um, you can now push the car pretty much as you see fit. Now, the big asterisk or disclaimer for this video. If you, in your 996, only drive around town, country roads, and such, this whole video is absolutely redundant, and I'd hate to create any more stress related to owning an M96 or M97 engine. Thus, basically, smooth sailing, enjoy your car, feel free to not listen and look at some, some fun, I don't know, dog or cat videos. Now, for the ones who do drive their cars fast, go to the racetrack, basically push the 996 platform to its limit, myself included, the topic of oil temperature versus oil pressure is incredibly important. Why? Because if the oil pressure, and you will see this by driving, it reaches pretty much five bar, at least here on the indicated, uh, indicated pressure. So that's extremely important for you, the driver, to know that the oil pressure is high and thus the lubrication of your engine on the oil side is absolutely fine and it should imply that you are getting oil in all of the necessary crevices of the engine, especially the bearings and the pistons and so on. Not to now get into philosophical debates on types of oils, why that is important and so on. Basically, it means your engine should not grenade. So if we are now in the predicament where you have an oil pressure gauge and the, and the gauge says the pressure is high on acceleration, mind you, that's important, only on acceleration, because if you're idling at five bar after one hour of driving, that's a separate problem. But again, back to the topic, you're on the racetrack, you're pushing the car, and while whilst you're accelerating, you have a solid five on your gauge. Okay, great news, that means you're fine, quote unquote. However, and this is the big disclaimer, one needs to know what the oil temperature is so that you can anticipate what I'm about to describe. So let's say you've been driving on the track for the last, I don't know, 50 minutes. You're having fun. Oil pressure reads perfect. You're a smooth and happy sailor. Great stuff. However, the moment the oil pressure drops fully, it can be in the seconds. 
your oil is fine, 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 fine. So maybe you're potentially not paying attention to it anymore. You see that there was pressure. So you just don't deal with it potentially. And then all of a sudden your oil pressure drops. Well, that can be a catastrophic failure. It doesn't have to be. Again, I'm not trying to paint a black picture because if you picked on up, pick up on that fast enough, it shouldn't be a topic. You shut off the engine at the track, have someone tow you. You have to disassemble the engine, find out what was going on. Was it only a temperature topic? Was it something else, etc.? Then you try to troubleshoot. However, an oil temperature, depending on the type of oil, is extremely important for you because you can set a threshold and this threshold will be incredibly important for you to know, okay, I'm personally aiming for a threshold of 120, between 120 and 120, 30 degrees Celsius. And this is my hot threshold. This is the temperature of oil that I'm willing to accept as my risk, as my temperature that I believe from the sources that I've spoken is the specific temperature where my oil still basically doesn't break away. Yeah. And the topic, the thing you want to avoid is this oil breaking away, um, falling apart molecularly, so to speak. And thus, long story short, losing the capacity to hold pressure, to lubricate and thus turning your engine into a molten piece of doo doo. So because of that, it is extremely important that one knows their pressure. OK, so now that we've discussed the temperature versus pressure, and I hope we're at the stage where you understand whether this is relevant for you or not. In any case, we have to talk about options. So with most of the cars in the world that have a classical OBD2 style port, if the car has an oil sensor, oil temp sensor, you can pick that up. However, this being a Porsche, there's always going to be something a little bit different. Specifically in this car, not to go too technical, the OBD2 port meets regulations. However, there is one line or one pin more specifically on that connector that only responds if a special signal is sent. Now, this special signal is being sent either from a PIVIS or from a Durametric. Those are the two very specific Porsche diagnostics tools that connect to the DME or basically the engine management in the CPU or ECU of the car and they read all of the parameters. Now, the point is that for your standard OBD2 reader, they will not display oil temperature despite there being a sensor in this car. Again, they will not display oil temperature despite the sensor being in the car. So beware if you're going on this journey that if you think that you're going to have your phone over here, you're going to have an OBD2 reader and it's just going to send you that information well you're absolutely wrong it's just not going to happen so don't listen to anybody who tells you otherwise i've been through this research for the past three years okay so i mentioned two other options one is the durametric the other one is uh, the porsche pivots the official diagnostics tool that porsche workshops and dealerships use well problem number one they're incredibly expensive or can be expensive unless you buy them used on official route etc but in principle for both of them, considering that you need to have a laptop to which this device connects, you're starting to talk about the seven to eight to 900 really bare minimum. But like what I see here in the used market, at least in Europe, um, it's around 1,500 1, euros for like a used device that you would still ideally want to test. Problem number one. And now problem number two is the fact that it's a laptop, right? So it's not something you're going to conveniently have here on the seat or whatever. And you're just going to play uh, or turn that on, have it connected to your oil temp. You're just going to be glancing with your with your eyes. So this is basically a no solution. So what I'm trying to say now that you do not have any options basically on the aftermarket that are, let's say, from a reputable company in terms of reading your oil temperature. So that got me personally extremely frustrated in terms of how the heck is that possible? Another option that it's for me, um, I don't want this, is basically you could connect a oil temperature sender, so basically a sensor that senses the oil temperature on the bottom of the oil pan of the 996. However, for all of you that are racing at the racetrack or driving to the track, you will know that you have to have a deep sump kit. That's maybe a topic for a separate video. If you would be interested, then let me know. But nevertheless, you could put it directly in the sump. The problem is that it sticks out and inevitably you will lose it at some point. And if you lose it, you may you know, have a catastrophic oil 
uh, pressure loss or oil loss in principle because if, if it catches on the bottom of the oil pan, which is the lowest spot, especially with a deep sump kit, well, you're going to catch something, boom, Bob, these are, Bob's your uncle and the car is going to go boom, basically. Long story short. Other option is supposedly there's a blank plug at one of the one of the valve covers where you could hypothetically put it, uh, put it there. But again, not the most elegant solutions because the, then you're going to have an additional piece of equipment on the side of your engine. One way or the other, you're going to have to pull that cable through the interior and then you're going to have to deal with another thing, which is finding a way how, where to mount a classical style video gauge uh, for oil temp, which considering the amount of space in this car is not exactly ideal. So, your standard solutions are non-existent. However, and this leads me to the last part of this video, I wouldn't be making this video if I wouldn't have a solution of me dealing with oil temperature anxiety for the past two to three years or four years now since I own my, since I own my first uh, 996. Luckily, ladies and gentlemen, there is a solution. And the solution is as follows. And it's the simplest solution on the market. The 996 uses Bosch's Motronic, I forget now specifically, but it should be either 522, uh, which is the style or type for the cable throttle cars of the early 996.1s, and then it's 7.2 or 7.8 for the later cable throttle or 4, uh, 4 so all-wheel drive style cars. So this specific one here is a Motronic 7.8, and basically that's, that's your um, CPU. On the CPU, there's a pinout. A pinout for the ones that don't have the information or don't know is basically a diagram describing what each pin on the processor. There's a huge cable picture it like this. There's like 80, whatever, 100 pins. So different cables connecting to this ECU. It connects over there and it sends a lot of information. And one of those pins, mind you, are the ones responsible for the oil temperature sender because it's a combined pressure and, and temperature sender. So this then means that hypothetically, and now practically in my case, if you connect to the correct cable, you'll be able to display a signal. So let's now talk about the signal. The signal is a volt range from 0 to 3 volts or somewhere about that, maybe 0 to 4, where 0 indicates extremely scorching hot, picture 150 degrees Celsius, and four indicates basically cold outside. Yeah, I'm going to maybe put a link to a to a post on Renlist where you can see um, the voltage translation curve. And from this point, if you tap into that wire, you have basically two options. One option, more complicated. There's a middle option, and there's a simple option, which is the one I'm talking about today. The more complicated option is that you take the signal you build an Arduino, and if you are so inclined to have one of those classical VDO gauges, you could create a translation algorithm that will take the signal, clean it up, and of course there's going to be electronics involved, and then translate the voltage curve into the curve that is then adjacently re required for this uh, VDO gauge. Not exactly ideal, and again, that doesn't remove the problem of where do I even put this said gauge. Option number two is quite similar. You take this voltage, you get an OLED display, you have an Arduino in between, so basically a mini PC, computer, compute unit, so to speak, and it then takes this voltage curve, translates it to temperature, to Celsius, you have to have some box somewhere, you need to have that connected, maybe there's a kit online, and and and. So that's your other option. Again, not perfect for me because A, I just don't want to have an Arduino and I don't want to be dependent on a third party person that I don't know or because I can't program it necessarily myself. I don't know how it was made, so it's going to make that process incredibly difficult. Or number three, and this is personally speaking, my favorite option and solution for the 996 in terms of oil temperature gauge, which is simply put connecting a voltmeter. Because by using the voltmeter, I personally couldn't care less if the oil temperature is 96 degrees Celsius it's 94 degrees Celsius, and then in three minutes, it's 97 degrees Celsius. That information I consider completely to be irrelevant because all that I need to know is two pieces of information. And information number one is what is the point of reaching operating temperature? And information number two, what is the point where at the racetrack or at the track, I need to slow down? And that basically means 
that in return for not having to deal with Arduino, connecting, computers, algorithms, and all that fun stuff, all I need to know is this is my operating temp voltage and this is my too hot voltage. Richard, slow down. And so this is, in my perspective, the easiest solution, which is over here. I have the voltmeter that is connected to the DME, that is connected to a switchable 12 volt power source, and that is grounded. And all this basically means is that currently the car has been sitting for a week or so. If I switch the ignition to on, let me do that. It gives me the information that there is approximately 3.3 one volts in the sender, which I can then simply translate to a voltage. It's probably going to be anywhere between 20 to 30 or maybe 10 to 20, uh, depending on the exterior outside ambient temperature. And so I can simply use this as a gauge. This is now integrated. And if I don't want this, I can simply pull it out, unplug it, and that's it. There is no complexity involved and it's fully, absolutely reversible. And so this is, from my perspective, the most pragmatic oil temperature solution for the 996 for the ones who want to simply know what is my oil temperature in the sense of when can I push the car and when am I pushing the car too much and I need to slow down. And by simply turning the key, I get me my oil temperature and it costs me a whopping $10 or 10 euros depending on where you're purchasing and so on. If you would be interested in a separate video where I'm going to go over the detailed instructions on how to install this extremely simple gauge in my other 996s, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.